Bom dia, pessoal. Estamos aqui para a defesa do Ebenezer. É, a banca... A banca é composta por, pelo presidente da banca, eu, Valdir Pilate, os orientadores Paulo Roberto Fagomes, é, Alexandre Tardelli, o membro interno Arian, os membros externos Igor Paulino e doutor Inês Stassarini, e o, os membros Márcio e Maurício. Bom, Ebenezer, você tem por volta de 50 minutos para a apresentação. Enfim, pode começar. Thank you, Prof, for the introduction. And thank you to the board for participating in my thesis defense. And then my gratitude to everybody watching from home um, this presentation. Today, I'm going to present um, my thesis defense on multi-instrument study of various aspects of equatorial ionospheric irregularities over American and African sectors. This topic was chosen because this thesis is made up of two distinct topics. And these two distinct topics are all part of the central theme of my PhD thesis. So in this thesis, we are going to look at those two distinct topics and then see how they are related to the study of ionospheric irregularities. In the presentation, I'm going to give a brief background about ionospheric irregularities and then the topics that I'm going to treat. And then I'll talk about the two topics that, are, that made up um, the thesis. And then finally, some literature reviews and um, the publications that came out of these investigations. The equatorial low latitude atmosphere is um, part of the atmosphere where we have several complex and unique phenomena in the Earth's upper atmosphere. This place, this um, part of the atmosphere is very variable. There are a lot of variations that go on in this um, part of the atmosphere. And the sources of these variabilities are called the drivers of um, uh, variabilities. And the, these sources that come from above the ionosphere, we call the main drivers, which include geomagnetic winds, um, geomagnetic storms, solar winds, solar activity, and the rest. And then about 30% of the variability of the ionosphere has been associated with drivers that come below or that come from below the ionosphere. And some of these drivers are um, planetary waves, gravity waves, earthquakes, lightning, and even sudden stratospheric warmings, and which is one of the main topics that we are going to look at in this presentation. Now, during geomagnetic, geomagnetically and solar quiet times, um, like I mentioned before, 30%, 20, 30 to 30% of this variation or this variability of the ionosphere comes from um, below the ionosphere. And because um, the ionosphere, the variability of the ionosphere is sometimes local or different times, the variability depends on local time, season, solar cycle, longitude, magnetic activity, and um, other factors that affect the ionosphere. In the low latitude um, equatorial ionosphere, there are several phenomena that are specific to this region of the ionosphere. Now, this is due to how the geomagnetic field lines and then the magnetic equator are, are structured around this part of the ionosphere. And because of this, the there are certain phenomena that occur in the ionosphere, such as um, unique 
configuration of the geomagnetic field lines over the geomagnetic equator, certain phenomena like um, the equatorial electrojet, the equatorial ionization anomaly, and for the purposes of this um, presentation, ionospheric irregularities, which includes plasma depletions, enhancements, that's blobs, and then even spread F. And also due to the dependence of the ionospheric variability of on the main drivers, these phenomena that occur in the ionosphere also are dependent on latitude, longitude, season, local time, and then geomagnetic activities. The large-scale ionospheric irregularities and scintillations in radio communication signals are some of the irregularities that we have in the ionosphere. And these irregularities affect signals that pass through them. They are generally created through what we call the Rayleigh-Taylor instability. And this Rayleigh-Taylor instability, the growth rate of this Rayleigh-Taylor instability is given by this equation that we have here. Now, the higher the Rayleigh-Taylor instability growth rate, the higher the probability or the chance of irregularity occurring. So these factors like the recombination rate, the Peterson conduct, the ratio of the a E region and F region Peterson conductivities, all these things affect the relative instability. One of the other factors is the vertical plasma drift. So if you look at the relationship between these values, they are actually proportional. So the higher these things are, except for this, you have to subtract. So higher uh, recombination rate means um, higher relative instability growth rates. And so the occurrence of irregularities are increased with higher relative instability, stability, sorry. Like mentioned before, one of the topics that we are going to discuss in this um, study is the observation of ionospheric plasma blobs which is one of the irregularities observed in the ionosphere. And these plasma blocks are regions in the ionosphere that have enhanced plasma density. Um, it was first observed by Watanabe and Oya in 1986 with um, satellites. And in satellites, the observation of blobs are seen as um, density peaks that rises above the background um, plasma density. In air glow emissions, they are observed as high emission intensities that uh, is higher than the background emission intensity as well. And then in ionograms, they are observed as high frequency um, echoes on the ionograms. Now, one of the reasons that we are studying plasma blobs or the observation of plasma blobs in the ionograms is that um, as far as I am aware, there have been only a few studies that have reported the observation of ionospheric um, plasma blobs on ionograms. Um, among them include Pimenta in 2004 and then 2007, Wang in 2019, and then um, Narayanan in passing mentioned the observation of and plasma blobs on ionograms that was in 2014. Talking about um, SSWs, they are one of the ionospheric drivers that causes variation or that has been reported to cause variations in ion the ionosphere. Now it occurs or its source is below the ionosphere. So by definition, they are large scale weather phenomena that occurs during the winter, um, winter polar regions. And then it involves an increase in temperature and circulation during this period. This temperature increase occurs when 
interaction between upward propagating planetary waves um, affects the circulation or the vortex during in the uh, polar hemisphere or polar regions. They can last from several days to weeks, and then um, they occur more in the northern hemisphere than in the southern hemisphere. And this is also one of the reasons why the study of the observation of ionospheric irregularities or um, the effect of SSWUs on ionospheric irregularities is being studied today because um, for about two decades now, there has been only two observations of um, SSW in that hemisphere. And a lot of studies have been done using based on the Northern Hemisphere SSWs. So this study was as in 2019 when the, there was an event in the Southern Hemisphere, we wanted to find out if this event also have the same effects or the same implications on the ionosphere and irregularities as has been reported based on the Northern Hemisphere SSWs. Now there are two different types of SSW or two types of SSW. We have the major SSW and then we have the minor SSW. These are categorized based on whether the westerly winds um, reverses or they only slow down. So when the western winds slows down, we only have a minor SSW, but when it slows down and then reverses, then a major SSW is said to have occurred. Studies have reported that amplified um, gravity waves and tides generated during SSW events has the ability to modify equatorial ionospheric dynamics, which may influence plasma distribution in the low latitude ionosphere. And then electron densities in the morning and electron densities in the morning decrease in the morning and then increase in the afternoon during SSW events, which has been reported by several authors. Another important reason why we are doing, uh, we are studying the effects of SSW on ionospheric irregularities that several studies have been done on how SSWs affect the occurrence of ionospheric irregularities. The only problem is that some studies observe an increase in SSW and some have also reported a decrease in SSW. So there is, uh, there isn't any consensus on how SSW affects um, the occurrence of ionospheric irregularities. And so uh, I believe that studying SSW, especially from the Southern Hemisphere, will shed more light on how, at least to increase our understanding and knowledge on how SSWs affect ionospheric irregularities and then their occurrence rates. So the first topic that I'm going to present is ground and satellite based observations of ionospheric plasma bubbles and blobs at 5.60 latitude in the Brazilian sector. Sorry. É, vai cair a conexão do Zoom. Vamos, vamos fazer um pause e a gente volta no, no mesmo link, tá, pessoal? Quem tá aí na, na lista aí. This meeting is being recorded. Oh. Can I? Ok. So the first topic that we're going to talk about is um, the study of ground and satellite-based observations of ionospheric plasma bubbles and blobs at 5.6 degrees latitude in the Brazilian sector. In this study, we are going to try to observe ionospheric plasma bubbles using um, three instruments, um, an Oscar imager, 
an annual sound and swarm satellites. The purpose of this study is to investigate and propose a methodology as to whether we can use an ionogram or ionosond only to study, observe and study ionospheric plasma blobs. Although some studies have already reported um, the observation of plasma blobs using ionosonds, no one has, as far as I am aware, has proposed some characteristics of these observations on the ionograms to give directions or guide as to whether you'll be able to use the ionograms or the ionosond to observe plasma blobs. So, like I mentioned, we are hoping to be able to propose a new methodology that uses ionosom to observe and study plasma blob occurrence with the following specific objectives. So we are guided through this investigation by these objectives. Uh, the first of which is observe and identify plasma bubble and blobs, blob signatures in air glow images. The second is observe and identify spread depth structures that are associated with these um, irregularities, bubble and blobs that were observed in the ionograms. Then in the third case, we compare the observations in the ionograms and then the air glow images to see if we are observing similar structures. If so, then what are the characteristics of these structures in the ionograms? Then that will tell us um, whether we'll be able to um, observe the blobs or the signatures of the blobs are being observed in the ionogram or the echoes on the ionogram. Um, we used optical imaging and then um, ionospheric sound and that's radar to observe to do this study. So we have um, an Oscar imager and an ionosond from a picture of ionosond from Araguatins and then um, the swarm satellite that was used to measure electron density, which was used as sort of confirmation of the ob observed structures that were observed in the imager and then the ionosond. The locale of the observation is Araguatins in Brazil. And then here we have the geographic equator and then the blue line here is um, the geomagnetic equator. The blue circle is the field of view of the ionosond at 400 kilometer altitude. And then the green one is the field of view of the all sky imager at 90 degrees and its angle. The study uses eight different case studies. Um, that's eight nights of OI-630 nanometer night glow observations in 2017. And then the corresponding eight nights that were observed on the island. Then we have the same thing. I compare the Kahan Central. Star Wars, you did a madame, you told 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 madame, uh, we have observations from. Uh, uh, some of the nights were just test cases. For instance, this um, 7th March was just a test case to see what the ionogram would look like when there are no irregularities. And then the other nights, we looked at the observation of plasma bubbles and blobs together. So 
the rest of the night, this here we have only plasma bubbles, and then the other nights we have um, plasma bubbles and blobs together. So the first night that's on the 7th of March, 2017, we have an all sky image that shows um, almost a homogeneous um, background plus, uh, intensity. And after linearizing and then plotting the intensity against the region, we have um, this almost fast linear um, variation. And the corresponding ionogram shows a typical nighttime, um, nighttime profile, typical nighttime atmospheric profile with um, a clear critical frequency, which has been indicated with this black line. On the second, in the second night, we have the 29th September 2017, and then we have a series of um, bubbles or plasma depletion signatures, and that is observed in the plasma density variations that keeps um, undulating um, in this graph. And then we observe um, spread F in the ionograms. The, the similarities between this and this are that here we have um, three reflections. Here we also have three reflections. But the reflections for this, that's the FR3, FR2, and then FR3 look somewhat similar. And that is similar for this case also. The only difference between these two is that here we have the occurrence of irregularities and so we have spread F. Here, there are no irregularities, so there is no spread F observation. If we come to the third case, we have two different structures. We have um, high intensity and then low intensity air glow image that corresponds to plasma bubbles and then blocks. In the intensity plot, we see the depletion, depletion and then the enhancement that follows what we observe in the raw air glow image. Here also, we have spread F occurring, but the difference between this spread F and this spread F is that this one seems to have extended to higher frequency regions, while this one stays at um, lower frequencies. In this case also, we have three reflections. We have the FR3, the FR2, and then the FR1. But the difference between this and these two is that the reflections are totally different from the FR2 and the FR3 are totally different from the FR1. We realize that the, from the FR2 and FR3, you can somewhat um, say that this is the critical frequency, or at least the frequency that these two are able to reach. But the FR1 extends beyond this um, frequency, which is not observed in any of these cases. So the higher um, frequency echoes are not reflected in the FR2 and then the FR3 traces. And this is what we observe in, almost, in all the cases that we are going to present. We, also, we see that when there is a blob occurring, we see the higher frequencies, but we don't see their reflections in the um, FR2 and the FR3 when they exist. So this is another case that we are presenting. We have a we have how the plus uh, emission intensity varies. 
So here we can observe the high emission intensity, and then here we have the low emission intensity as observed. And we have the corresponding ionograms. We see uh, the spread F on all these ionograms. F, R3, F. The, and we see the same here, which is similar to the observation, uh, the observation that was shown in the prior slide. Now this shows these are expected to come from higher plasma density regions. And then the lower echoes are expected to come from lower plasma density regions as um, plasma density um, is proportional to the plasma frequency that um, it reflects. Another case is presented here for the 12th of October, 2017. Again, we observe the high intensity and then the low intensity regions that are observed in that are shown in the intensity plots. We have the bubble, the blob, the bubble and blob that are seen on the air glow images. The spread depth on the ionograms also show the occurrence of uh, low frequency echoes and then high frequency echoes. And then we see again, due to the blob, the high frequency echoes that are not being reflected in the higher order reflections of the ionosphere. In this particular case, we have um, a swarm satellite that is swarm B that passed almost inside the field of view of the ionosphere. And then the plasma density variations are plotted here. This line is the geomagnetic field line geomagnetic equator. And this is the point at which the swarm satellite passed the geomagnetic equator. And these are the variations. We have the um, plasma, reduced plasma density regions, and then we have the high plasma density regions that correspond to the, um, the observations in the air glow and then the ionosons. Here we have four different nights that show a similar story. We have plasma uh, high intensity regions and then low intensity regions for um, October 21, October 23, November 20th, and December 21st, 2017. And the uh, ionograms, their corresponding ionograms show the occurrence of um, spread F with low frequency echoes and then high frequency echoes for each occurrence of plasma bubble and blobs that were observed in the air glow images. And then we have the corresponding um, swarm observations for all these nights that show the occurrence of uh, high plasma density regions and then low plasma density regions around the observation area. As I mentioned before, several studies have, not several, a couple of studies have um, reported the occurrence of um, the observation of plasma blobs using ionograms. These observations are from 1 et al. to 2019. And they showed um, the plasma, high plasma, high frequency regions that are associated with the plasma blobs. And the low plasma, uh, low frequency regions that are associated with the plasma bubble. They did not show or did not characterize these echoes or on the ionograms. But from their observations, you can see that even if you look at this, you can see the F1 and FR2 and then the FR3s. And you can see that these regions are almost always 
different from the FR2 and then the FR3. Um, this was observed in um, Hainan, Japan, uh, sorry, China. So you see that the observations that we showed uh, earlier, they look almost similar to the observations that were observed in this region. And then again, you have another one where you have the echoes that are not reflected from the higher order, um, on the higher order traces. This is also another study presented by um, Narayanan et al. in 2014 in the Indian sector. And again, you could see the second trace and then the first trace, and you could see the echoes that extend beyond the, the second trace. If you come here, we have the same characteristics. You come here, we have similar characteristics which have already been reported in our, um, in our observations. Now, these reports, like I said, show these characteristics, but they never mentioned any um, characterization of these showing that, okay, if we observe these kinds of characters, it may mean that we are observing plasma blobs or not. They just said that um, plasma ionograms are able to show the occurrence of plasma blobs and that these plasma, these uh, echoes are observed at the higher frequency part of the ionograms. So, some observations, some studies have been done. Uh, like I mentioned, Pimenta, Narayana, Wang, and so on. So, as far as I'm aware, these are the only reports of the observation of plasma blobs on ionograms. Um, in 2012, Fagundis reported um, the observation of some similar structures that occurred at the higher side and high um, uh, virtual heights, but they rather associated this observation to um, MSTIDs. However, um, Kill et al. has also reported that um, plasma blobs may originate or may be induced by MSTIDs. So possibly what Fagundis observed may or may not be plasma blobs observed on um, the ionograms. And according to um, Calvet and Cohen 1961, ESF features on ionograms depend on the nature of the scattering region. So depending on which scattering region, whether it is a region of high plasma density or low plasma density, um, we are going to observe these structures on the ionograms at higher frequency regions or lower frequency regions. And then how they are distribution over the ionograms in the westward um, horizontal plane. So um, the observations that we I showed here show that the frequencies that is for the blobs on the ionograms did not change significantly when the image or the images showed the shifting of the blobs from the west to the east. So since um, it is known that the frequency or the plasma frequency is associated with um, the plasma density, then if the scattering region or the local that is reflecting the density does not change as it moves from one side of the uh, ionosom to the other, then it means that the observations that we are observing on the ionograms are actually from those regions, which means that is, if we have this plasma density here and it moves from here to this point, the only thing that changes is the height. But this density or this um, frequency is not going to change because the plasma um, frequency that is observed depends on this um, 
density that is moving across um, the observation site. And thus, the frequencies of the echoes that we observed associated with the plasma density, the high plasma densities, are going to be observed at higher frequency regions, while those associated with the plasma bubbles will be observed at low frequency regions. So in conclusion, the incidence of blobs in air glow images showed higher frequency ESF structures in ionograms with echoes extending up to 15 megahertz or on the frequency scale greater than the critical frequency of the night. Then the typical ESF um, stretch from low to high frequencies, which imply the coexistence of um, plasma enhanced regions and then plasma depleted regions. Unlike the irregularity free night and then the typical ESF ionograms, the ionograms from the atypical ESF show that when multiple ionospheric reflections occurred, the FR1 structure was typically different from that of the higher um, reflected um, structures. And then in the case of bubbles, and then the absence of irregularity, the FR1, FR2, and FR3 reached the same um, frequency limits while um, for the, in the cases where um, the blobs occurred, it's extended higher than the FR1 and then the FR2 um, limits. Um, this investigation has already been published in Advances and Space Research in 2019. So now we move on to the next um, study. This one, this one study, this um, is the effects of the 2019 minor Antarctic sudden stratospheric warming on the occurrence of ionospheric irregularities in Brazil and in Africa. So in this case, we are you looking at the 2019 SSW that occurred in uh, the Southern hemisphere and see whether the occurrence of ionospheric irregularities was affected in any way by this event. So the objectives of the study are to look at the, spread, uh, the occurrence of spread F during different phases of the SSW event. Um, we also looked at um, the occurrence of road phase fluctuations also in different phases. And then we compare um, the occurrence rates in those phases and with another year when there was no SSW to see if there is any change in the occurrence rates that were being observed. Um, we used um, GPS receiver. Um, we used the root, uh, root uh, to study atmospheric regularities and then we used the spread F and then the critical frequency as one of the parameters that we were studying in this investigation. Three ionosons were used in Brazil. We have um, one from San Jose dos Campos, we have Jatai, and then we have Araguatins. Then we have about 33 GPS receivers um, located in various places in Brazil and Africa. So we have the West Brazil, East Brazil, we have um, West Africa and then East Africa. Um, in these regions, uh, there is not uh, GPA, a lot of GPS receivers and those that are there even don't have a lot of data, at least within the period that was being investigated. But we managed to uh, get a few that we were able to analyze for this um, study. So the SSW event is here in 2019. We have the increase in um, the temperature, the stratospheric temperature in this region. So we have the pre-SSW phase that is before the temperature started rising. We have 
the ascending phase, we have the peak phase, that is where we had the maximum temperature, and then we have the recovery phase, we have the descending and then the post SSW phase. So we have the recovery phase and then the post SSW phase. And then for comparison, we used data from 2019, 2018, sorry, 2018, within the same period of investigation. Here, there was no SSW event. And then we have some geomagnetic storm that occurred just at the um, ascending, the beginning of the ascending phase. So this first graph shows us the day-to-day -day occurrence of spread F during all the phases that were being investigated. The left side shows from 2019, and then the right side shows um, from 2018. In 2019, we, especially in the peak phase, we observe a low occurrence rate in all these uh, ionospheric stations. So unlike in 2019, in 2018, the occurrence rates increased. So for the occurrence rate in 2018, it just increased from the um, pre phase and then moved on as it goes on to the post SSW phase. And this is typical because in Brazil, around this time of the investigation, the occurrence of SS, uh, sorry, ionospheric irregularity starts to ramp up from August as we move on into um, October. However, in 2019, when the SSW occurred, this um, trend that we expect that the occurrence rates will increase accordingly decreased briefly during the peak phase, and then it started rising again following the same trend that is expected. So the occurrence frequencies at Jatai and SJC were higher than in Araguatins during the ascending and peak phases. So this is um, just to talk about the latitud latitudinal variation of um, SS uh, irregularities. Um, and we see that here, instead of higher occurrence in um, Araguatins, we observe that San Jose and Jatai uh, recorded higher occurrence rates than uh, Araguatins during the ascending and peak phase. And it has been reported that this may be due to the shifting or the extension of the EIA crest during um, SSW events, which may have increased the plasma density in the region such that we are able to observe more irregularities during that, um, those regions than in the equatorial region. So here we have some statistics about the occurrence frequencies. Um, I will just look directly at the peak phase. If you look here, we see that um, from uh, the ascending phase to the peak phase in Araguatins, we see a decrease. And that is um, the same for all the stations. Even if we sum up all the occurrence frequencies for all the three um, stations, we still have a decrease from um, the ascending phase to the peak phase and then an increase again. But if we come here, we see an increase from here all the way to the post phase. Here we see an increase. And then only in SJC, uh, San Jose's campus, that we see a decrease during the peak phase. But if we look at the total occurrence during the entire period. Again, um, we see an increase from the peak phase to the descending phase. Now, this is a graphical representation of the um, results that I pre presented earlier. We see the dip in the peak phase of the occurrence frequencies um, during the SSW period. And then in 2018, when there was no SSW, we see um, sometimes 
it rises and sometimes it decreases. And the variation here could well be due to the geomagnetic storm that we observed in the beginning of the ascending phase of the uh, phase of the period. Then here we show the um, F2, FO, F2 parameter and how it varies during the SSW and then non-SSW periods. Here, from here to here, we can see some um, dip in the frequency parameter. Um, here also, as it enters here, we see some values dipping. Here, not so much, but even if you look at the average here, you can see that there is a decrease here, which is a little bit different from here, where from here to here, we still see some rise, some uh, the F FOF2 value increasing as we move from the, <coughs> the ascending phase through the peak phase to the descending phases. So in 2019, the F2 values increase. This implies decrease in plasma density, which has been observed that if the plasma density is increased, it is much more easier to observe irregularities than when the plasma density is lower. Um, so this might have affected the occurrence of ESF during the peak phase. The effect of SSW on ionospheric plasma density has been linked to the decrease in tech, um, F layer electron density, and then EIA intensity at different times in the day during, um, during and sometimes after an SSW event. This has been reported by several authors. Um, Vieira in 2017 observed that all over Brazil, the VTEC decreased by about 30% in the daytime during and after an SSW event. Then in 2015, Fagundis et al. saw a decrease in FOF2 parameter in the afternoon and evening period during the 2009 warming event, which is um, consistent with what we are reporting here. Then in 2018, it was observed that generally the NMF2 responded negatively in the evolution and then peak phase of an SSW event and positively during the recovery phase, which is comparable to what has been shown here. This slide shows the road phase, daily road phase fluctuations that we observed. Here we have West Brazil. This one's not clear. So we have the West Brazil 2019. Then we have East Brazil 2019. We have West East 2019. And then we have West 2018 and East 2018. I can't see this. So if we look here, we see that we have low latitude, low latitude, low latitude, and then we have the beyond EIA region, and that is um, the same for this region. So the results show that um, there is a higher occurrence rate of um, road phase fluctuations in the low latitude and equatorial regions than in the high latitude um, or the beyond EIA crest region. And that is similar to um, the 2018, that's the uh, SSW period and then the non-SSW period. The, what we are interested in is during the peak phases of these events. Now, if we take just the numbers, it is difficult to see the variation. So we calculated again for the rates of occurrence and um, in the coming slides, I'll show how these were affected. This is the result from the East and West African sectors. You realize that in most of the African sectors here, the East, there are almost no observations. 
Um, here we have the West African sector. This is YKRO, that is Yamusukru. And this is in 2018, Yamusukru, we observed most of the road phase fluctuations in that um, region, which is around five degrees. Pessoal, vocês estão ouvindo o Ebenezer ou não? Bom dia, Valdir. Não é possível ouvir o Ebenezer no momento. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Okay. So, as I was saying, in some stations, we observe a decrease from the ascending, ascending phase to the peak phase. However, in stations where we don't see this decrease, if we look at the occurrence frequency in the peak phase during 2018, when there was no SSW, we observed higher occurrence rates than observed in um, 2019 when the SSW occurred. So what I'm saying is um, in some stations, even in 2019, we observe a decrease from the um, ascending phase to the peak phase. In cases where that did not happen, the occurrence in 2018, when there was no SSW event, we observed higher occurrence rates in the peak phase than in the peak phase in 2018. That is um, the occurrence where there is no SSW seems to be higher than the, uh, the period where there was some SSW events. So again, graphically here, we see um, these stations where we, we don't have a decrease from the peak to the ascending, uh, the ascending to the peak phase. We observe an increase uh, peak phase in 2019, where there was no SSW compared to the peak phase in 2019 when there was SSW. So the occurrence of irregularities 
uh, is known to be controlled by the radicular instability, um, which is one of the one of the factors that um, is responsible for the occurrence of atmospheric irregularities. Now, the upward E cross B upward drift due to the PRE is thought to be inhibited during SSW events, which was um, reported by um, the Paula 2015 and then um, Goncharenko in 2013. The Paula also in 2015 reported the decrease in the occurrence of scintillations during um, SSW event. Now, since um, PRE is a major factor in the growth rate of the RTI, if the PRE is inhibited, then it stands to reason that the RTR growth rate is going to be reduced. As such, the occurrence of, or the probability of an irregularity being um, occurring is also reduced. That may be responsible for the reduced occurrence rates that we are observing during the peak phase of the SSW event. Then another factor is that unstable flux tube field line integrated conductivity enhanced by a symmetry of hemispheric density due to meridional winds and a decrease in vertical plasma drifts during SSW events may also lead to a decrease in the growth rate of plasma instability. So these two factors, and I believe others more, may affect the occurrence of um, atmospheric irregularities during at least the peak phase of the event. So in summary, we, from our studies or from the investigation, we observed that um, the influence of SSW events on the occurrence of irregularities uh, are observed. The ESF results showed higher rates at Jatai and SJC than in Araguatins during the ascending and peak phases of the 2019 events. And as I said, this may be as a result of the movement or the shifting of the EIA peak during the SSW event. Then irregularity occurrence showed lower rates during the peak phases in 2019. And in 2019, in all peak phases in 2019, and in 2018, in all ionosan stations and some GPS stations. Then at stations where the peak occurrence rate did not reduce in 2019, the occurrence rate during the peak phase in 2018 were almost always higher than the occurrence rates observed in the peak phase of um, 2019. And this investigation also has um, recently been accepted by, uh, accepted for publication in advances in space uh, research. So here are some, some of the references that were used in the investigations and uh, Thank you all for your attention and for your participation in this event. Thank you. Prof. Okay, thank you, Ebenezer. Eu só vou fazer uma pequena pausa de cinco minutos e aí depois a gente volta para a discussão na seguinte ordem. Vamos começar com o doutor Igor, depois a doutora Inês, depois o doutor Ariel, em seguida passa para mim, Valdir, e depois eu posso fazer os orientadores Tardelli e Fagundes. Okay. Obrigado aí.